My name is so Philippe Lerut. I was for more than four decades a journalist in Belgium, and at the same time, I was for more than a quarter of a century busy with the defense of rights of journalists. Press freedom has been regularly violated in Turkey since the creation of the modern republic, and especially during the periods of military dictatorship, this freedom was particularly restricted. Turkey has international and national legal obligations to fulfill. Like many other countries, it signed and accepted the Human Rights Declaration of the United Nations on 6 April 1949. And the Constitution of the Republic of Turkey, besides guarantees freedom of thought and opinion, Article 25, freedom of expression and dissemination of thoughts and opinions, Article, Article 26, press freedom and inadmissibility of censorship, Article 28, and unacceptability of conf confiscation of printing houses and their annexes on grounds of having been used in a crime, Article 30. Since 2000, the European Court has been seized of 164 case, cases related to freedom of expression and involving Turkish journalists and or media. And it condemned Turkey in 154 of these cases, which is in 93.90% of the cases. But problems regarding the press, freedom have never been addressed seriously. The Turkish state's policy of denial of ethnic or linguistic minorities threatened mostly Kurdish or Armenian journalists. At a certain moment, the prefect of Istanbul informed Dink that he, if he continued to publish articles of this kind, he could not, he could not guarantee his security. Dink was prosecuted and fi finally condemned to six month detention in 2006 and was later murdered by a young Turkish nationalist in Istanbul on 19 January 2007 in front of the offices of his bilingual weekly newspaper, Agos. Meeting Feizi Oglu, the president of the Ankara Bar Association stated, I quote, we no longer have freedom of press in Turkey. Tens of journalists who express their thoughts were taken under custody in open-ended inquiries. The European Commission wrote, I quote, the increasing incidence of violations of freedom of expression raised serious concerns and freedom of the media continued to be further restricted in practice. The attempt coup on the 9 from 15 to 16 July 2016 and the declaration of a state of emergency on 20 July 2016 gave rise to a campaign of increased repression for which journalists and the media were large, largely victims, among others, including lawyers, trade unionists, academics, magistrates, etc. By the end of 2016, 178 media outlets, including news agencies, newspapers, and television channels were closed by executive decrees. A further 30 publishers were closed down and their books banned. The total number of books banned through those closures reached the thousands, and people apprehended while in acquisition of books, magazines, and newspapers faced prison sentences. According to Reporters Without Borders, the numbers of journalists detained only in the first year of the state of emergency surpassed 100. Other organizations gave much larger figures, figures, with free journalists' initiative claiming that 187 journalists were under arrest by the end of July 2018. By the time this report was prepared, the free journalist initiative number was 154, and for a reason, as a reporter with all borders, 34. A further 167 journalists were under search warrant and had to flee Turkey to escape arrest, according to the Stockholm Center for Freedom database. Due to the role of the media as a public watchdog, they enjoy, they enjoy a higher level of protection than any other business. Media outlets subject to the emergency decrees are not limited to media allegedly affiliated to Gulen.
the closure of Özgür Gündem and the book publisher Evrensel and police raid on Kum Hürriyet are examples how, of how the state of emergency has been deployed against critical or independent media outlets and public publishers. And the report concluded with a serious warning. The situation of the right to freedom of expression in Turkey is in grave crisis and requires immediate steps to, for Turkey to be compliant with its obligations under international human rights law. Central, central to this crisis are the 100 plus journalists behind bars and the hundreds more facing prosecution on terrorism related charges. While the names in jail have fluctuated over the past three years, the overall figures have barely declined since a high of over 160, making Turkey out as the undisputed leading jailer for journalists worldwide, a title it has held for almost a decade. Behind those figures lies a story of egregious violations of fundamental rights with dozens of journalists held on the most serious terrorism-related charges for months, sometimes years, pending trial, in many cases without an official indictment. A dozen of foreign journalists were expelled from Turkey following the breakdown of a fragile peace process between the PKK and the Turkish state forces in July 2015. Uh, this new m uh, regulation compels social media companies with over 1 million users a day to have representatives based in Turkey who are Turkish nationals. In case of non-compliance, they might impose fines up to 40 million Turkish lira, approximately 5 million euros, advertising bans and the reduction of internment bandwidth by up to 90%. Platforms are also obliged to respond to requests to block or remove content within 48 hours or face fines of 5 million Turkish lira, which could increase to 10 million Turkish lira if they fail to respond. Turkey has been condemned for violation of Article 10, 10 of the European Co Convention of Human Rights 154 times since 2000, closing down around two 200 media outlets, having blocked more than 400,000 websites and organizing a strict system of authorization for classical radio and for online broadcasters, again, is again in clear contradiction with human rights, in particular Article 10. And against this background, it can be concluded that Turkey cannot currently be considered as a country within which a sufficient degree of freedom of the press and freedom of expression is guaranteed. Turkey is not acting in compliance with the standard of a functioning democracy because a functioning democracy without an effectively guaranteed freedom of press is impossible. Also, the timing and targeting of a long list of journalists in the following days shows that these journalists had been on the Turkish government's list well before the failed coup. The failed coup was therefore an excellent opportunity to execute this long established plan. The clear purpose is to silence all critical voices in Turkey as much as possible, whereby prosecution and long-term imprisonment are used as frequent method to reach that goal. I thank you.